Hey, good morning. Welcome to my Jesus Bubble this morning. I am in, if you've got your Bible, I am in um, Isaiah chapter 60. You know, I have a memory. This, this chapter has stayed with me since I was a little girl. I have a memory of um, being maybe eight or nine years old. And um, the, the church where we attended, it was actually way up north. And it was a tiny little church, but had a ton of kids, some really good memories from up there. And I remember the pastor doing a full series on verses one through three of Isaiah 60. And he would start every sermon with, arise, shine. And I remembered that so clearly so it's kind of cool to be reading it again, uh, and I am not going to do a full sermon series on those first three verses. We're just going to go through chapter today. So <laughs> if you if you have your Bible, grab it, um, and you know when. Uh, so open open to chapter sixty, and it says, "Arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine, for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you." You know I um. This right now, it, it it happens to be October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and so a lot of the stuff that I'm I'm putting out and a lot of the content that I'm sharing is all about domestic violence awareness, and um, you know, and as I think about it, and I think about people that I know and other advocates, um, and those who have gone through things and are now helping others as a result of their experience, it it makes me so much more aware of how um, each of us has a story to share. And when we get to that point in our healing from whatever has happened to us in the past, we are called maybe even commissioned, you might say, to turn around and let that light shine for other people to see. It's kind of like that little children's song about letting your light shine for everyone in the neighborhood, except today with social media and technology, we can, <laughs> we can shine way farther than just our local neighborhood. It says, verse two, darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light and mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Uh, you know, I, I think that that has a lot to do with that. We, we can bring that into contemporary times today and, and say, so, you know, when you are, when you are living an authentic testimony, when you are living your story as God has provided it to you, people are drawn to that. People are drawn to real stories of real people who have been through real junk and real pain and are now on the other side, not bitter and angry and, and hateful and resentful and, and ornery about it, but have allowed God to transform that pain into their greatest story. I believe truly that God takes our greatest pain and transforms that pain into our power to be able to be a, a conduit for his greatest blessings to others. And yes, Taylor just made left a comment from suffering to glory. I absolutely agree. And that is what Isaiah 60 is all about. It says, look and see, verse four, for everyone is coming home. Your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried home. Your eyes will shine and your heart will thrill with joy. For those from around the world will come to you. Vast caravans of camels will converge on you. The people of Sheba will be, bring gold and frankincense. All of this symbolic wording talking about recompense, about restoration after you have experienced the pain and the suffering and that has trained, changed you and transformed you into someone who is willing to give back, someone who uses that testimony and that story to help other people, to bring freedom for, to other people. If you remember, Isaiah 58 talks all about bringing freedom to those who are in prison, those who are in emotional bondage, those who are in slavery, breaking them out in other words. Um, and that how when we share with others, when we proclaim liberty to captives, that 
it brings salvation and healing and joy to us in return. So, you know, there are those, especially in today's climate, who tend to talk about how, hey, if you've been through something, that basically means you should never tell anyone how anything about that subject because that means you're damaged. And, you know, I want to push back on that. I want to, I want to make the statement um, that I believe in Scripture God actually takes people who have experienced great trauma and great difficulty and he calls them specifically to minister to other people who are going through similar things for the purpose of comforting as we have been comforted. I actually was reading that just this morning and... I can't remember the text. Oh my goodness, I can't remember. But um, the Apostle Paul says that when we are experiencing God's comfort, he comforts us. Why? So that we can turn around and comfort others the way God has comforted us. That means that when we experience God's comfort for whatever reason, for whatever pain we have been through, he calls us to turn around and share that comfort forward so that we are able to, to pass that comfort on to others. That is why one of the reasons why he comforts us, so that we know how to share it forward. That's huge. So if you see other people, I'm, I'm sure none of you would do this, but if you see other people shutting down survivors of trauma or domestic violence or assault or abuse or emotional pain, if you see other people shutting down those survivors and saying, hey, you're way too broken to help other people, you're paranoid because you went through it, all this other junk. If, if you see people accusing others of that, point them back to scripture where God says that we comfort others the way he has comforted us. And that is part of the purpose of him giving us comfort is so we can share it. If you haven't been through it, you have no reason to talk about it or act like an expert on it. So I, you know, I, and I see in Isaiah 60 here, the same thing. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations in the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears because you're letting your light shine through what you have been through into sharing for other people. And when we do that, regardless of the detractors, regardless of those who say, hey, you have no right to do this because you're just damaged goods because you just went through whatever you went through and now that's colored all your opinion and you see the world as a broken place. Well, guess what? Newsflash, the world is a broken place. There are people experiencing types of brokenness all the time, all around us. And it often takes those who have been through something personally to be able to recognize the red flags, to see the signs, and to have the courage to speak up. Because once you've journeyed through something painful yourself, you, you have a very hard time staying silent watching someone else suffer when you might possibly be able to help someone. Now let's look forward in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 8. It says, what do I see flying like clouds to Israel, like doves coming home to their nests? They are ships from the ends of the earth, from the lands that trust in me. Led by the great ships of Tarshish, they are bringing the people of Israel home from far away. So when we talk about this, we're talking about, uh, you know, let's, let's bring that out of that symbolic language. What I see God saying here is that when we let our light shine, when we speak boldly and clearly about uncomfortable subjects, when we are willing to put it out there, and when we are willing to be honest about the stories of how God has brought us through pain and share that with other people, it draws those who also trust in God. It draws those who need comfort. It draws those who need healing like doves returning to their nest. It brings people home emotionally and spiritually and psychologically. It brings people home. It breaks them out of prison and captivity. It returns them from captivity to freedom. Verse nine finishes, they will honor the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has filled you with splendor. 
Foreigners will come to rebuild your towns and their kings will serve you. I will now have mercy on you through my grace and your gates will stay open day and night to receive the wealth of many lands. God is talking about when you have gone through painful experiences and you get to the point where you start speaking out about your healing and you start sharing with others to to give forward that healing to 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 be bold and courageous which is a huge step to take and not everyone's ready for that at the same time i get that i'm not urging anyone to step into that when you're not ready but there comes a time when everyone gets to the point well not everyone but if you're pursuing healing there comes a time when you get to the point where you're ready to start saying something where you're ready to start being used. So if that's happening to you right now, I want you to know that Isaiah 60 is for you. It's a full list of promises that there will be those who come around you. And I've experienced this myself. When I started speaking out about things in my own history and I started saying, hey, I am willing and ready to be used by God to help others because I am tired of being silent and carrying this in the darkness and I want to be a light. I want to let, I want to rise and let that light shine. And so when, when this happens to you, whenever that is, or to someone you know, God is saying he will bring people around you to help rebuild you as a result of you being willing to speak out. He will bring those around you that will give you what they have to invest in you as you begin to minister. I have experienced that so many times in little ways and in big ways. It says, Verse 13, the glory of Lebanon will be yours, the forests of cypress, fir, and pine to beautify my sanctuary. The descendants of your tormentors will come and bow before you. Those who despised you will kiss your feet. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Now, I'm not saying people are going to come and worship you and worship at your feet. I'm not talking about hero worship here. I'm talking about God bringing things around full circle. I'm talking about other generations of those who may have been deceived by people who hurt you, realizing the truth as you speak out and as God brings them on their own journey and bringing them back around and them saying, like it says, the descendants of your tormentors will come and bow before you. I'm not talking, again, about worship. I'm talking about reconciliation. That at times, if others are willing to be part of it, that God will bring reconciliation from the most unexpected places that brings more and more layers of healing as you own your story and you speak out. Verse 15, though you were once despised and hated with no one traveling through you, he's talking about the land of Israel. I'm talking about, I'm just taking that and applying it to people today. I will make you beautiful forever, a joy to all generations. Powerful kings and mighty nations will satisfy your needs. You will know at last that I, the Lord, am your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Israel. And this, this is beautiful because everyone that has been through some deep kind of brokenness, some kind of um, traumatic experience, whether it is uh, in your home or in your workplace or in your church that has just left you shattered and broken down, there's a lot of times where in in those experiences, it feels like everything you've touched has turned to dust. It feels like the things that you are, that you valued are just, they've rotted in your hands. And, and here in verses 16 and 17 and 18, and maybe 19, this, this part of the chapter of Isaiah 60, God is talking about how he redeems, how he, he recompenses and trades up. He says, I will exchange your bronze for gold, your iron for silver, your wood for bronze, and your stones for for iron. In other words, whatever you have that seems like it is completely broken down and it has become without value, God can take that. And as you heal and as you speak out and as your light shines, he can trade it up. He transforms what is left in your hands, those human things, and he makes it divine. He makes it to glorify him. He is faithful to take whatever you've got 
and turn it into something better in ways that you cannot if you are just trying to do that yourself. And a lot of that is our mindset. It's how we use our words. It's how we stay faithful to him. It's our, our way of thinking, our way of praying, our way of taking that story and surrendering it up to him and handing it forward and saying, God, if you can use my brokenness, if you can use my story, if you can take this and, and in, in me being humble, and being vulnerable, if you can share this out and let my light shine and heal someone else through my story, I'm good. I will be vulnerable. I will let other people see my brokenness. I will let other people see the journey of how you have healed me. And when other people try to shut it down and say I'm too broken or I'm too damaged or I'm too paranoid because of what I've been through, I will just keep standing there and letting that light shine. And I will hold my head high because I know where you are leading me, God. And God will honor that, that humility and that kindness and that steadfast faithfulness. And he will take what you have that has turned to dust and he will turn it into gold. And I don't necessarily mean financial riches. I'm talking about the things that really matter in the heart. You will have those things that matter. Let's move on. It says, I will make peace your leader and righteousness, right doing, your ruler. Violence will disappear from your land. The desolation and destruction of war will end. Salvation will surround you like city walls. Oh my goodness. That is such a promise for anyone who has been through domestic violence, assault, abuse, uh, anguish, narcissistic abuse, whether that's in your church or your job or your family. It doesn't matter. When you recognize that God wants to surround you with salvation like city walls, that praise will be on the lips of all who enter there when you found your tribe and you know that your people are all sold out to serving God and to helping others, it is something beautiful. Verse 19, no longer will you need the sun to shine by day, nor the moon to give its light by night. You're not needing earthly things. You're not needing human light. You're not needing human direction and guidance. You're not needing human validation from the sun and the moon and the stuff that normally we turn to for light. That's like looking at a street lamp instead of gazing at the stars. For the Lord God will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set. Your moon will not go down. In other words, you will be surrendered and saved and your, your, you'll be surrendered to the work of God and saved by his glory, not yours. And that your light and your decisions, I'm sorry, not your light, but, but your decisions and your actions will be guided by his light, his leading, not a desire or a sense of obligation to the opinions of the people around you. So when other people have their, their crazy ideas, when other people try to shut down your testimony and your story, you can say, yeah, you're welcome to your opinion. It's a free country and that's okay. I'm going to keep doing what God has called me to do because I'm walking in his light, not the light of the sun and the moon and the street lamps. I'm not, I'm not worried about what God, I mean, I'm, about what people are telling me is the appropriate thing to do. I am worried about doing what God has called me to do. And if you don't understand, that's okay. God will continue working with you. You don't have to get vitriolic about it. You don't have to get all crazy about it. You don't have to defend yourself about it. If you if you watch any of the stuff on my Facebook page, there are people who just come in hot, just like, you know, they just, they disagree and that's okay. And I just, you know, Titus 310, warn of a divisive person once, warn them twice, and after that, block them on Facebook. Um, you know, I'm just, it, let people know that you're there for, a for a rational and and spirit-led conversation and that your greatest worry is about doing things according to God's heart and if they don't get that that's okay they're not at that place yet in their life and you don't have to go convince them about it because the Holy Spirit is most powerful and he is the one who convinced you about it originally and he is the one the Holy Spirit can convince other people when they're ready to hear it so just keep telling your story and saying what you know God is telling you to say for the Lord will be your everlasting light. And here's a beautiful promise. Your days of mourning will come to an end. All your people 
will be righteous and they will possess their land forever. For I will plant them there, God says, with my own hands in order to bring who glory? Not us, to himself. The smallest family will become a thousand people and the tiniest group will become a mighty nation at the right time. I, the Lord, will make it happen. He, st he stabilizes us. He settles us in when we are sold out to living for his glory and telling the testimony that he has given us and sharing the story of healing that he has brought us on. So my question to you today from my Jesus bubble is where is God calling you to shine your light? What story is God calling you to share without any, without any hesitation and turning a deaf ear to the detractors? What is God calling you to speak out about, especially given the social climate of today? What is God telling you to share, to shine your light for his glory in your story? And that's my question for my Jesus bubble. So that's what today's about. And if you have an answer, if God is telling you to do something, if God's telling you to take action, if God is telling you to reach out for a platform to share your story, drop me a comment, send me a message. I would like to hear how God is calling you to arise and shine because your light is come.